everybody, welcome to a brand new series that I'm going to be rolling out over the next little while. I don't know how regular the episodes will be, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this out here. It's going to be called Helix in the Studio. Uh, and the reason is, I get tons of questions from folks asking how is best to use Helix in the Studio, how to set it up, uh, issues that they're having, you know, not being able to get signal in, not being able to, you know, and all sorts of little issues that I, I hope to clear up, but also recording tips and tricks beyond just dialing in a sound on the Helix, but taking those sounds and how we can utilize them in the studio and in a recording environment uh, to make our music productions better. So that's what the premise behind the Helix in the studio series is going to be. Today, I wanted to start off very simple and cover a topic that I've had many, many questions about, and hopefully I'll get to all the things I, I mentally want to here to make sure that everybody can get set up, but that's using Helix as an audio interface. So many folks I see use external audio interfaces with their Helix. It's already set up with their recording system maybe, and they might do like XLR outs or quarter inch outs. But Helix, believe it or not, as many of you already know, makes an excellent, excellent audio interface. So we could use Helix in that way as well. So how do we do this? Well, what I'm gonna do, the problem with this, I guess, is, is that I don't have every DAW out there, you know, digital audio workstation. Um, I have Cubase uh, 10.5 Pro, which I use pretty much, you know, that's the sole DAW that I use, but I also have a purchase copy of Reaper, which is a very, uh, budget-friendly, full-featured DAW that they actually sort of allow an unlimited evaluation on as long as you're willing to watch their little splash screen at the beginning. Uh, but I, I believe that license for it is maybe $60 US, you know, compared to something like Cubase, which is many hundreds of dollars. Uh, both are excellent programs. Uh, I prefer Cubase just because it's my workflow and what I'm used to. But I thought if I could at least take those two and show how we can set up Helix as an interface with a couple DAWs it's going to kind of be similar, regardless of whether you're using Logic or, you know, uh, Studio One or any of the other ones I can't think of off the top of my head. Uh, not that I've used all of those, but I think it's pretty much the basic premise is gonna be the same as far as getting it set up. You might have different menus and whatnot to, to work through, but that could be found in the manuals for those particular DAWs. So let's do this. Let's go over to my computer and we're not going to deal with HX Edit right now at this moment. What we are going to deal with is, are two things, Cubase and Reaper. So here's Reaper and uh, let me minimize that. There you go. Here is Cubase. Okay, so let's start with Cubase and I'm going to take you through this kind of step by step. Number one thing you're going to have to do to be able to even get to this point is make sure that, and most of you will already have this, is that you have the drivers, the audio drivers, appropriate audio drivers installed for Helix so your computer can recognize it. I'm on Windows. I don't know how it works with Mac. I'm assuming you still need uh, the audio drivers installed or maybe it just recognizes it. Either way, it's not a bad thing to, to have the drivers installed when necessary. It's a necessary thing to have the drivers installed when necessary. Um, one simple way of doing that, and this is why I say most folks will already have it, is because as soon as you load in or, or uh, install HX Edit, it also installs the drivers. So once you have that, as soon as you, you plug in your USB and switch on your Helix, the computer should recognize it and add it as a potential audio interface. So that would be step one. And there's instructions on you know, how to use HX Edit and load it and everything on the Line 6 site. So that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. I, I'm, I'm taking the assumption that everybody's already got the, the, the Helix talking to the computer in the sense that the drivers are installed. So once we're in, the first thing we have to do with our DAW is we need to assign the Helix as the audio interface for our particular digital audio workstation. So let's start with Cubase. So here we have a blank project that comes up with Cubase. There's no tracks, there's no nothing. So what I need to do is I have to make sure that the Helix is talking to Cubase as an audio interface. So I'm going to go up here, if you guys can see this, to my Studio tab. I'm going to click that. And I'm going to come down to where it says Studio Setup. Kind of makes sense, right? When I click that, a whole pile of selections come up over here having to do with MIDI and transport and video and all sorts of other things. What we're looking for is VST Audio System, which makes sense, right? 
And up here, you can see right now, VST Audio System is assigned to ASIO Pod Go. So right now, Cubase is talking to my Pod Go, which you can maybe see the corner of, a little flashing tap tuner light right here. So that's not gonna do me much good if I'm plugging my guitar into the Helix and trying to utilize presets and, and whatnot that I have on the Helix. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to open this little menu and I need to go and select ASIO Helix. You can see here, I have Helix drivers installed, I have HX Stomp drivers installed, I have Pod Go drivers installed, I have the IK Multimedia Axe in out ASIO drivers installed. So if I wanted to pick the Axe in out, I do this, I hit switch, now you'll see it switch here, Axe IO ASIO, right? Um, and then I could use that, but I don't want that, I want it to be the Helix. So we see we have the options, I select Helix, I hit switch, and you see it switches right over to Helix right now. Now, once I do that, I can also go down one sub tab here and say ASIO Helix, and this gives me the ability to make the possible inputs and outputs of the Helix visible to uh, when I'm working with tracks in Cubase. Let's say I know I'm ever gonna only use input one and two on the Helix. We have eight inputs available. So I could go and say, I'm going to click these off so they're not even an option for me to select. I don't really have a problem leaving all possible inputs and outputs active because I just never know when I might need them in a situation. So I would just leave that. Now the other thing you can do here is go to control panel and when you click that, it would bring up the Helix control panel, which allows us to set things like the bit depth, whether we want to record at 16, 24, 30 bit, 32. I usually leave that at 24, it's, it's fine. And also the buffer size, okay? Uh, the buffer is going to adjust how much latency we're gonna have in our system, right? So let's say we had you know, our guitar and we were monitoring it, it through Cubase. What's gonna happen is if we have a lot of latency, I could hit a chord and it'll play back many milliseconds later, which doesn't sound like an issue until you try it and you realize when I'm hitting, it, it, it's, it's out of time. I'm, I'm hearing it later than, and even something like 20 milliseconds can be very distracting to a player to, to be trying to play in time with what's playing back through the DAW. So most of the time we want to set this, then you'd say, well, set it to extra small. That's wonderful. Yes, but if you notice down here, it says smaller buffers provide lower latency but increase CPU usage. So it really depends on the computer system you have, how powerful it is. If you have a very powerful system, a lot of times you can get away with very small buffer sizes. If not, then we have to inch those up. So the goal is to try to get your buffer size as, as low as possible so you have the lowest amount of latency um, that, that, but so that your computer is not hiccuping and coughing and sneezing and wincing. <laughs> uh, and that's what you'll notice is you'll get a lot of digital clipping and kind of noises and whatnot when your computer can't keep up with that, okay? So uh, there is a way around that though. And what, what I'll do here is I could set this, you know, to any particular setting I want and hit apply. And uh, <clears throat> next time I, right now for some reason it doesn't update the input latency here. Um, it seems like I almost have to go back out. I'm not sure why this is at this point, but if I switch out the pod go, let's say, and then back to Helix, sometimes that resolves it. But that's, that's yeah, see now it's changing. It's a, it's a weird little issue. It shouldn't really work that way, but that could be something in Cubase that needs updating or maybe in the Helix driver. I don't know at this point, but it's not a, a deal breaker. Anyways, we're going to get around that with kind of using what we call direct monitoring, which happens with the Helix when we play. We're just gonna kind of hear it through the system anyways, um, and we can just disarm the um, input monitoring on the track itself so that there won't be any latency, okay? Uh, so that's basically it. So I'm, I'm set up now so that the Helix is working as an audio interface. That's wonderful. So let's go over to Reaper and let's see if we can do the same thing. So with Reaper, it's gonna be slightly different. Uh, as we saw in Cubase, we had the Studio tab. Unfortunately in Reaper, we don't have a Studio tab. We have an Options tab. So we're gonna take Options, we're gonna come down and all the way down to Preferences, or you could just hit Control P and we'll wait for a second for those to pop up. And along here we have so many different preferences, but we wanna go under audio and device, right? And again, we want it to be an ASIO driver 
And again, in the list here, I have all the same options I had before, meaning I have all those drivers installed, but I need Helix to talk to Reaper, right? So I'm gonna hit that. Now, enable inputs, and it says, what would your first input you want to be recognized? And I go input one, last one, input eight. And that's gonna be kind of like in Cubase, where I activated all the inputs so that they're available for me to use. And same with outputs. Output range from one all the way through to eight, okay? Uh, and then here, ASIO configuration, I can click that. And again, the same Helix control panel comes up and we can set our buffer size and whatnot in there. Hopefully that's clear, all right. So let's do this then. Let's work while we're in Reaper. Let's add some tracks and see what we can do with this. Now, one of the questions I get a lot, and there's a great feature on the Helix and something that I do without fail. When I'm recording a guitar track, I always have two tracks open and I record the dry direct guitar signal so that if I need to reamp or change something later, I can simply reamp that dry signal. So uh, back through the Helix or through Helix Native or through Podgo or, or a real amp if I want. It's just, it's a safety net. Sometimes I never end up using it again. But so many times I've used this feature and it saved me in many ways of not having to redo tracks and really, really wonderful feature. So by default, Helix is set to output on the USB 7 output, just your dry, unaffected guitar tone. So you're plugging your guitar into the Helix, it's bypassing anything in the Helix and going straight into the DAW on USB 7. So let's keep that in mind. That's gonna be very helpful. So what I'm gonna do on Reaper, I'm gonna hit Control T twice and add two tracks. One of these is going to be my, let's call it Helix Guitar, okay? And the second one I'm gonna call Helix Guitar DI. All right, now I need to assign the proper inputs to this. On our Helix now, let's go over to HX Edit for one sec. On HX Edit, we have input and output blocks. All right, so our input blocks, we have all these choices. Multi, guitar, aux, variax, variax magnetics, mic, return one, two, three. Okay, so these are all of the possible inputs we have. For us, we could leave it set at multi, or for this example, we're using the guitar input. So let's just set that to guitar. So that means I'm plugged in with my guitar into the Helix, into the guitar input. So I want that to feed this path 1A up here, okay? Then I could create whatever my preset is and anything I want on here. Now, let's just do this. Let's just throw, for, for argument's sake, let's throw an amp on and not touch it. There we go, done. I'm not gonna mess around with presets here. We then go to the output. Now this output has to go to the right place. Now again, this says multi-output. Okay, so it's going out to many of the outputs, but let's say we are hooked in through USB. Let's say I wanna use USB one slash two, meaning it's a stereo output, okay? Which we could either choose one or two or both. Okay, we're gonna do stereo for our, our purpose here. Uh, but th really, this is not going to be anything stereo about this right now, because it's just a mono amp. There's no stereo effects. There's nothing going to make this into stereo, right? So we're getting one mono signal. So in our, in our DAW now, what I can do is I have my, think of our signal path. I've got my guitar here on my stand. If it was in my hand, it's plugged into the guitar input of the Helix. It's going through our signal chain. And now I've assigned the output to USB 1, 2. I can get rid of this now and we've now assigned this to go into our DAW of choice, right? But you say, well, how do we make sure that that one and two is getting to the right track? Because we don't want that for everything. We want that for the Helix guitar. We want the processed signal. But for the Helix guitar DI, we want the USB 7 signal, which is the dry direct signal. So what we do is we arm record these with the little red record button. And what you see shows up is, input. So we can now select the input that we want to come in. So if we want to record a mono version of that, which we probably would in this case because it's a, a mono signal, I would simply come in and choose input one because we assign that output on our HX edit for our Helix. Or I could choose input two. Or I could go down to input stereo and choose one two and that would record a stereo track. Okay. On Reaper you have to be careful too on the in 
you can say record input, which will just record whatever is set here, but you can also have it force mono or force stereo. So be careful you're not set to one inadvertently, okay? So that's now set up, input one, two. Now, down here on my guitar DI, as I mentioned, by default, Helix outputs the direct DI guitar on USB 7. So let's go here and we choose input 7. So it's not going to be called USB 7 here, it's going to be called input 7, but it's the same thing. Now with these two things, if I grab my guitar, and I'm not really set up for you to hear good quality audio here, uh, but you'll see the waveforms uh, sort of get created as I go. So uh, let me do this, I'm going to hit Control R, and you see the recording starting. Now hit that, and I have my tracks. Now let me just expand these so you can see what's going on. Both tracks are very different. This is the stereo, as I chose, guitar track processed. And let's see if we can at least hear uh, how this sounds. I'm gonna mute the DI. I'm gonna turn this up so you can at least get it through my microphone. Versus if I unmute the DI, you're gonna hear how this is unprocessed. Okay, two different things. Um, again, now if I if I just simply undo uh, that recording, and if I switch this to input mono, if I hit Control R, you'll see that my tracks here now are mono, but this would be the processed mono. and that's gonna work beautifully. All right, so one other thing you're gonna have to do is if you noticed as I was playing, um, I wasn't actually hearing my guitar until I started recording. So we do have to come up and turn record monitoring on. And this is where you'll notice if your latency is set too high, then it's going to feel like there's a delay. So we want to adjust our buffers appropriately, okay? All right, so that's basically it for Reaper. So let's get out of Reaper. Now let's go back to Cubase, all right? And I'm gonna come over to Cubase and again, make sure that Helix is set as my audio interface, okay? Um, we've already set it up as such, have our inputs active and whatnot. Now, to assign this to the appropriate places, we need to also now go up to Studio and hit Audio Connections or we can just hit F4 on our keyboard. And what we have here, inputs, outputs, group effects, external effects, and a whole bunch of other things that we don't really need right now. Um, so, on our inputs, they have one stereo in assigned with input one and two. Now, I can add more of these. I can add a bus. I can say, well, I want a mono input as well because I want my DI sound. And I can name these too. I could call this Helix guitar, and I could call the mono one Helix Guitar DI. All right, but I'd have to set the Helix Guitar DI to input seven, again, because I want it to be the dry signal. Remember on HX Edit, we've already assigned one and two as our output paths, right, to come into here. So we have our Helix Guitars one, two, and then we have our dry tracks for input seven, okay? So we get out of that and everything should be fine. We come and we add tracks, to Helix, and I hit T and I open the add track panel. I hit audio, and I'm gonna ask it to keep this dialog open. I want one stereo track with the Helix guitar input that I just made, right? Um, and I'm just gonna call that Helix guitar, whoops. All right, and I can do so like that. I can add that track. And then I also want a mono track based off of Helix Guitar DI or input seven as I selected here, which turns it into a mono track. And I can call that Helix Guitar DI. Okay, now I, I can get out of this dialog and I have my two tracks here, which I can arm. So again, now if I hit record, So again now, as you'll hear, I'm not hearing any guitar coming out, so I would have to come and enable my input monitoring. I would only do it on the Helix guitar track.
because I don't want to hear the DI track, as you can hear there, right? So um, I would record enable that if I hit record. I play that back. So you notice that when I started playing, I still had the record monitor turned on and that was preventing me from hearing my original track. Let's mute the guitar DI. Although let's just listen to this first. You have the guitar DI, it's gonna be very quiet. That's the unaffected signal. And then we have this one, but we won't hear it until I turn the record monitoring off. Now there is a setting in here. If we go to preferences, and I believe here I can go manual or tape machine style. And tape machine style, if I apply that, will turn uh, the monitoring on when I am not playing or recording, but as soon as I start playing, it turns it off. Okay, so that's kind of an interesting thing. But I'm still open to the possibility of the latency if I have my buffer settings off. So I'm gonna talk about how we can fix that in just one second. Um, the other thing I can do is just even mute my Helix Guitar DI. It will still record um, even though because it's, it's muting the output and it's still getting the input, if that makes sense. Now, what if we wanted to not have to worry about the latency settings, okay? Well, that's gonna have to do more with the Helix now. So watch this. Let's say I didn't want to do this tape machine style preferences. I wanted it to be manual, and I just wanted to always leave monitoring off. Now, I don't hear my guitar while I'm playing it. Well, if we go over to HX Edit, and we change this output to multi, Okay, this is now going to send sort of the direct monitoring signal out at the same time as recording. So I don't need this monitor button on anymore. I stop this, I go back, now I can listen to my tracks that are recorded, all right? So that's the way that I usually work. So I'll usually leave HX Edit on, on, uh, on uh, multi, and then that allows the USB 1.2 to come in, but I also get my direct signal. It just, it's real personal preference. Some folks like to do it, uh, you know, in different ways, right? But whatever works for you, um, is fine. Okay, so I hope that's all clear. Now, what about if we wanted to use Helix? Let me put my guitar down. In different fashion though, let's say we had a full band set up. Let's say we had our guitar track and maybe we had a vocalist that was going to sing into a microphone and maybe some keyboards at the same time. Well, Helix has a microphone input on it, which is a wonderful feature. So let's say I had my guitar path like I just you know, showed you up here and that's working all fine and dandy and wonderful. Um, and let's say I'm gonna go back and set that to uh, USB 1.2, okay? Uh, and let's say we had a keyboard track that we wanted to utilize. Well, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just add an empty gain block and yank that down so we have something on this path. But let's say that now I grab my little split block and I move that down over here and I move this down over here. I've created a whole separate path. So I could now come and set this to, let's say USB 3.4 and this to uh, return one, uh, one, two. Now what we could do is we could plug our keyboard into return one and two on our Helix. It's going to hit through this path alone. I could even turn this block off it's not gonna be processed at all, and it's gonna hit USB 3.4. So if we come back over to Cubase now, what I could do is I would go up to my audio connections again, I would add another stereo bus, and I would assign that stereo bus to inputs three and four, and let's call that keyboards, okay? I come over here, I add a stereo track on 3.4, and we call it keyboards, and we're done. Anything that now would be plugged into return three and four on my Helix will get recorded to this track we'd have to put our monitoring on, okay? What about if we wanted 
some vocals now. Well, I could come down to this path. Uh, well, let's even say there's some, you know, a drum machine or some other source. I could say, okay, well, I also want to go uh, return 3, 4. And I'm going to put another block here. I'm going to pull this down and create the same situation. And we could put something through here and return three, four, whatever we wanted. Maybe it's a, you know, backing track. Maybe it's a drum machine. Maybe it's a, another keyboard, right? We would set this one to maybe USB 5, 6. Or let's say that this is just a mono track, right? Uh, we, could, we could set it to just um, return three, right? So lots of options. The other option too is that we could set one of these to mic. And now it's going to take the mic input, and we could set this to USB 5, 6, and just take whichever one we want, 5 or 6, right? Um, which is, is pretty handy, you know? Uh, so let's say we had two mono sources. Let's say like return 3 and a mic. And we set both of these to 5, 6. Now you would think you would get that recorded all on the same track, but not really. What we could do is just pan this all the way to the right, pan this one, all the way to the left. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna isolate those signals. And over back here in Cubase, we would just add our appropriate tracks. We would go up to audio connections uh, and we would make the appropriate, you know, bus assignments if we want another stair, if we wanted a mono path, right? Assigned to five. And then maybe another mono assigned to six and I can choose whichever inputs I want. And now that's gonna correspond with what I just set up over here, if that makes any sense, okay? So lots of possibilities beyond what a lot of folks might realize within the Helix, and this might be a kind of a path that maybe you've never even really thought about being able to use, but lots of options and lots of possibilities. It's a built, like a built-in mixer, basically, within the Helix that we can utilize in many, many different ways. So as far as I'm concerned, that kind of gets you going with it. Uh, we could also make those same assignments in Reaper and, and whatnot, and any other DAW. That's, obviously, I can't cover every single DAW that's out there. Um, this is obviously limited to what I have, but I think the general premise is going to be the same, and that gives us the options to get us going with what we probably at least need. One other word about the microphone, actually. Um, on USB 8, if we use that, that is going to be the direct unaffected mic signal. So we don't even necessarily have to use a path up here to get an unaffected mic signal. Unless you wanted to process the mic with something like Maybe a compressor, right? An LA Studio Comp or something along those lines. Then we would have to use this path. But if we were just going to do a direct, just like the guitar, the DI is USB 7. By default, USB 8 is the vocal microphone. And then we could process it later on in the mix or what have you. I hope that was clear, guys. I, I know it was maybe jumped around a little bit, but I hope that helps a few folks anyways, uh, you know, get to where they need to go with their DAW and uh, with using Helix as an audio interface. So many more topics to come in this series. I think it's gonna be a really enjoyable series to do. I'm looking forward to it. And please leave me any questions that you might want me to cover in this series and I'll do my best to get to them, all right? Thank you guys so much again for tuning in. Please share the video with anybody you think would, would like to, to view it and would get some help from it. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the little bell notification uh, so you get notified when I have new videos come out. Thanks so much for your time, guys. I hope that was helpful and I'll be back soon with some more content. Ciao for now.